On the mountain of Shizuoshan, there is commotion. The rekindling of spiritual energy has incited disorder among the ferocious beasts. An immense multitude of diverse animals is in swift motion. Among them, a young woman runs. She is weary, covered in scratches, with tattered remnants of rope on her legs. At this moment, she is pursued by people, an armed army that shouts at her, demanding her to halt. They caution her that she will not be able to escape as long as the beasts rage. One of the men fires a shot. For this, he is reprimanded, where there are beasts below, and he could have hit one of them. The man is displeased with this rebuke, but fails to utter a word in his defense. They are then attacked by a ferocious beast, a mutant boar. It turns out that the soldier's shot struck its fang. Now, the boar charges at them in a frenzy. Recognizing this, the soldiers flee in fear. Their leader remarks that it is foolish, for they cannot escape the beast despite their utmost desire. He states that their coordinates is a consequence of their feeble combat power. The man takes hold of an enormous cannon and fires at the boar but misses. Meanwhile, the golden lion, the king of Shizuoshan, emerges before them. This colossal creature has a hide and mane resembling gold. Another distinguishing feature of the lion is the presence of a horn. Observing the beast, one of the soldiers wonders if the lion is truly made of genuine gold. Another soldier, laughing, suggests verifying this and fires at the lion with his cannon. The lion leaps from the cliff to the ground and strikes the man with its mighty paw, sending him flying to the side. All attempts to harm the lion in any way prove futile. Gazing upon the scattered bodies of the people, the lion acknowledges his culpability, for he cannot control his own strength. Nevertheless, he also discerns the mistake of the soldiers as they encroached upon this place, which is the habitat of numerous beasts, and furthermore, they created chaos upon the lion's mountain. The lion's name is Lu Feng. He is an orphan who, after university, found no better course than becoming an unofficial hired worker. One day, he fortuitously found himself in this place and transformed into the Golden Lion. Consequently, regardless of his actions, his power grew, whether it be the extension of his claws, the utilization of his lion's roar, the tidying of his mane, or the elimination of wrongdoers, each time a system window appeared before him, proclaiming that his power increased by plus one. Presently, a parrot shapeshifter approaches Lu Fang, it addresses the king as your majesty and expresses admiration for how he swiftly annihilated those monkeys, referring to the soldiers. Lu Fang requests the parrot not to flatter him, but instead to offer assistance. He also inquires about the fate of the girl who was being hunted by the people. The snake shapeshifter responds that, unfortunately, she was swept away by the forceful surge into the beast torrent. When the beasts parted, Liu Fan noticed a girl lying on the ground. He approached her, realizing that she was not as ordinary as she seemed. Clearly, she was lifeless, yet her body remained infused with spiritual energy. Lai Yufan exhaled upon the girl and witnessed her spirit leaving her body. An intriguing sight indeed. Now, on the lion's cliff in the ruins of a cave, Lai Yufan, in his lion form, sat upon a throne. He comforted the weeping girl, assuring her that if she did not wish to become a ghost, she could simply undergo reincarnation. Unexpectedly, a system window reappeared with a message, detected that the host has collected a spirit asterisk one. Please bind it as soon as possible. Reading the message, Layu Fan was shocked. He had done nothing. So how did the window appear? Moreover, he was puzzled by the content of the message. What did it mean to bind a spirit? This was the first time he had received such a task. Previously, there had only been notifications about earning points. With horror, he realized that the idle days were coming to an end and something was clearly on the horizon. He believed that after careful planning, he needed to complete the mission. The system would not deceive him. That much he knew. Lost in these anxious and somewhat vexing thoughts, he was interrupted by a female voice. He beheld the goddess of candles, Xiao Zhu, sitting beside the girl's spirit, assuring her not to fear the king, for he was not malevolent, just a little straightforward. Xiao Zhu informed the girl that he had shared his spirit to prevent her soul from dispersing. Xiao Zhu herself had become a goddess in the same manner. However, she advised against relying solely on the power of the golden lion. There were two conditions for becoming stronger. 
personal predisposition and motivation. The demon, Xiao Zhu, implored the girl to reveal why those people had pursued her. The girl replied that her name was Xiao Lin, and she lived in the village of Man, nestled at the foot of the lion's cliff. Since the revival of spiritual energy, people from her village had been disappearing one by one, leaving only twenty or thirty behind. Nine days ago, a group of people suddenly invaded their village. The soldiers were armed to the teeth, and the villagers, fearing them, begged not to be harmed. One elderly man fell to his knees, pleading to be spared. He expressed his reluctance to venture into the forest, as it was easy to get lost there. However, one of the soldiers struck him forcefully on the head with his weapon, calling him an idiot and threatening to kill him on the spot if he didn't go voluntarily. They also took his grandson hostage, threatening to kill the boy if the old man didn't comply. Left with no choice, he had to venture into the forest. As soon as the old man entered, trembling with fear, something swift and elusive attacked him. The soldiers immediately noted that something had swiftly appeared and vanished, taking the old man with it. This caused panic among the neighbors and people living in the village. The soldiers promptly sent the old man's grandson into the forest, despite the cries of his mother. Gradually, they sent one person after another. It didn't matter if they were children, adults, elderly, women, or men. Each time someone disappeared, they sent the next person into the forest. Thus, everyone vanished, one after another. One gentleman relayed via radio communication to someone else that they were already in close proximity and surmised that this must be the final stretch of the road. Only Xiao Lin remained at that point. She, too, had to venture into the woods. Immediately, a black mist enshrouded her. It seemed to possess hallucinogenic properties. As she entered it, she unconsciously began moving in a singular direction. There, she beheld her parents. Overwhelmed, she tearfully rushed towards them, but upon awakening, no one was by her side. She fell into a pit, which, it is presumed, the soldiers were seeking, along with the red flower and sarcophagus that led Xiao Lin to it. These individuals had slain her fellow villagers, her parents. She could not allow them to succeed in their endeavors. Since Xiao Lin could not destroy the sarcophagus, she consumed the flower. Subsequently, her body became weightless, and her eyes seemed to acquire the ability to perceive in darkness. Soon, the military arrived and took away the sarcophagus. Concealing herself behind a tree, the young woman heard one of the men inquire about the whereabouts of the flower. Unlike the soldiers, he was dressed in ordinary attire. He began to clamor that he urgently required the sarcophagus and the flower. Without the flower, he would not pay a single penny. The soldier responded that the disappearance of the plant was likely the fault of the girl from the village. The man in the brown coat retorted that he cared not for the reasons. He demanded the flower be delivered to him and the girl be killed. As a result, Xiao Lin became the subject of pursuit and subsequent persecution. Upon hearing this tale, the goddess Xiao Zhu erupted in fury. The golden lion comprehended that the sarcophagus and the flower must be some rare treasures, considering the military's zealous search for them. In truth, all these problems had arisen from human envy. Due to the fact that this entire story unfolded at the foot of the golden lion mountain, he would be unsettled if he did not investigate the matter thoroughly. Following the revival of spiritual energy, people had gone mad. Lu Fan believed that a similar situation was not far off. Lu Fan, in his lion form, approached the girl slowly. He stated that the past could not be altered, but since she had become his ghost, her problems were now his problems as well. He added that if she agreed to become his ghost, he would assist her in this arduous situation. Tearfully, the girl agreed. At that moment, a new message from the system appeared. Ghost binding successful. Task activated. Servant for the lion. Reward. Yin fragments plus 1 to 10 fragments can be exchanged for a complete yin. Witnessing this, Lu Fan was overjoyed. He could hardly believe that by fulfilling this task, he would finally be able to regain his human form. Since the transformation of Li Fan into the Golden Lion, from the time he was just a little cub, a system emerged that made him stronger, regardless of his pursuits. However, nothing extraordinary occurred until he became the King of Lion Mountain. After this came to pass, the system commenced sending tasks and rewards for their successful completion.
Upon receiving the message following Xiao Lin's agreement to become his ghost, his initial thought was whether this assignment resembled the acquisition of a slave. The mysterious opportunity and enigmatic reward seemed peculiar and suspicious. Nevertheless, if the fragments assist him in regaining his human form, the reward should be even better. He inquires of the young lady about the intrusive thoughts and ideas swirling in her mind. He clarifies whether she wishes to avenge the people who destroyed her family and friends. The young lady responds that she would never dare to cause trouble for her king. Now that she is the king's ghost, she has a new home. Besides, it is unknown what happened to her kin, whether they are alive or not. Even if they are all deceased, she wouldn't want them to end up in the wasteland. Upon hearing these words, the golden lion experiences a sense of injustice and sympathy for this child. He believes that the young lady has endured far too much at her tender age. He exhales an unusual pink smoke. At that moment, his avatar appears before him. He tells Xiao Lin that the avatar will now accompany and protect her. Lai Fan senses that a second wave of spiritual energy recovery is approaching. His mountain will also undergo some changes, so he must defend this place and everyone residing within it. Lei Fan also hands Xiao Lin a dagger. When the young lady gazes upon it, she understands that it is no ordinary dagger, but the power of the Golden Lion, his malevolent spirit. The Golden Lion states that her path will be arduous, hence having a sharp dagger will be beneficial. The Candle Goddess, Xiao Zhu, transforms into a small demonet the size of a palm, brightly blue in color. She also sprouts tiny wings. Xiao Zhu states that since the journey will be difficult, she will undoubtedly need a bright candle to illuminate the path. Deeply moved by such kindness, Xiao Lin wipes away her tears and expresses her gratitude. Together with Xiao Zhu, the avatar of the Golden Lion, and the Sharp Dagger, Xiao Lin sets off towards the foothills of Lion Mountain. Currently, they pass by a mountain stream located to the north of her village, Man. She reveals that it was precisely here where her people disappeared on that fateful night. Xiao Lin recounts that after the unknown individuals took the sarcophagus away, the black mist engulfing everything nearby dissipated. The avatar of the Golden Lion mentally acknowledges that the aura of ghosts is particularly strong in this place. Having ventured a little further, they come across a vast number of skeletons. Approaching one of them, Xiao Lin recognizes Grandfather Lai by his attire. She realizes that all these people were killed by the Black Mist. Surprisingly, the goddess Xiao Zhu asks whether a person who died just yesterday can turn into a skeleton so quickly. The Golden Demon sighs heavily. His paw takes on a pink hue, surrounded by something resembling flames. He utters, if every karma is destined to bear fruit, I have not done evil but carried goodness and joy, and in this wicked world there should be no one who must suffer eternally. Fruits of Karma The Path of Perfection Renunciation of All Worldly Desires Nirvana At that moment, a vast number of small blue flames envelop all the skeletons. After engulfing their bodies, the flames rise high into the sky. The Golden Lion informs the girl that he has purified the sorrow in the souls of the village residents so that they may enter the cycle of reincarnation. Shaolin calms down and expresses gratitude to his majesty. However, at that moment, Lu Fan wonders if such a large number of spirits consuming spiritual energy at the foot of his mountain might become a problem in the future. Having carefully surveyed the surroundings, Xiao Lin states that she hasn't found her parents. Then the candle goddess Xiao Zhu suggests continuing the search for them. Before they could make much progress on the long journey, the avatar of the Golden Lion warns Xiao Lin that someone is ahead. He mentions that there are five of them, and he can smell gunpowder, which means the people are heavily armed, armed with blue bullets, to be precise. Xiao Lin looks into the distance and mentions that's where the sarcophagus was previously placed. She wonders if people could still be there. Indeed, the military personnel are still present in that location. Two men discuss their anger towards the girl for leading them there. One of the men promises that when he captures her, he will torment her for a long time and then kill her in the most agonizing way possible. His companion is not particularly pleased that they are eating surrounded by several corpses. The military man then steps on one of the skulls with his boot, almost crushing it, and mentions that these are the girl's parents. He is certain that she will want to find them and will return to this place. 
The men laugh at the thought that only skeletons await her here. Upon hearing this, Xiao Lin becomes furious. She tightly grips the dagger in her hand and prepares to attack. She is halted by the avatar of the Golden Lion, who warns that someone is approaching them. At that moment, a helicopter flies above them. A woman jumps out of it. The military personnel greet her, referring to her as Master Mai Yun. The robust woman from the Special Forces mentions that she heard Liu Yi took only the sarcophagus. The military personnel inform her that he is currently searching for a flower that belongs to a girl from Man Village. Mai Yun expresses her dissatisfaction with this response. She states that she couldn't care less about the flower, as it's just a flower. What she is seeking is the souls of 49 ghosts who died in vain over the past 81 years, the soil of the Three Realms. At that moment, the real Golden Lion, seated in his chambers, receives a system notification. It informs him about the discovery of the soil of the Three Realms and the expansion of his own domain. He also acquires new sinister knowledge, plus one. Lu Fan encountered ominous knowledge for the first time. Now, gazing upon his hand, he perceives every vein throughout his entire body. Regardless of his actions, he always grew stronger, but such an ability awakened within him for the first time. He even sees the aura pulsating within his veins. Now, the Golden Lion can observe every delicate branch and tiny stone within its territory. Meanwhile, at the site of the sarcophagus ruins near the village of Man, the soldiers marvel at the unexpected value of the soil there. They claim they will keep Master Mai Yun's secret. However, a woman, holding a dagger to the throat of one of the men, declares that only the dead know how to keep secrets. At that moment, the other soldiers aim their guns and rifles at her, labeling her a malevolent witch and threatening to kill her. Such threats only make Mai Yun laugh. The bracelet on her hand begins to glow. The same light envelops all the soldiers, and they rise in the air as if gravity ceases to affect their bodies. At that moment, Mei Yun attacks them, stating that it was foolish to assume that men could compete with her when they have depleted their strength and resources. Mei Yun approaches the ground and spills blood from her palm onto it, mocking them. She proclaims that if it weren't for her idea to use the villagers to find the way, Lu Yi would not have obtained the sarcophagus and doomed all his people. In that moment, seething with rage, Xiao Lin rushes towards her, dagger in hand. Mei Yun unexpectedly turns around and strikes the air with her knife. Xiao Lin is astonished, wondering if the woman can see her. Subconsciously, the girl dodges the blade. She realizes that now that she's a ghost, she no longer needs to fear injuries, but her body still occasionally reacts on instinct. At that moment, Mei Yun looks around and realizes that no one is beside her. However, her bracelet couldn't be mistaken. She then puts on her glasses and can now see Xiao Lin. Mei Yun expresses surprise at encountering a ghost in this place. Xiao Lin screams that she will avenge her parents. Mei Yun laughs and asks why the ghost suddenly pursued her. She also wonders when she supposedly killed the girl's parents. Xiao Lin is stunned when she realizes that the woman can see and hear her clearly. Mai Yun asks her if she herself remembers all the ants she crushed. Xiao Lin attacks her, and a battle ensues between them. At that moment, the avatar of the Golden Lion watches them. He contemplates why, even though the woman saw her, she did not react immediately. What is even more peculiar is that her response was not one of fear or surprise. Now, Lu Fan's avatar ponders whether Mai Yun has encountered ghosts before. Suddenly, a thought pierces his mind. Her indifferent expression was likely due to her knowledge of how to defeat a ghost. The avatar promptly employs the Golden Lion's technique, Dragon Absorption. Mei Yun strikes Xiao Lin. The spirit is struck by her ability to feel this blow. Mei Yun informs that she wields a special knife designed specifically for someone like the girl. Chao Lin understands that now she has no choice but to dodge and attempt to attack. However, the reach of the woman's blade bothers her as it is quite significant. Xiao Lin attempts to use magic, but the woman repels her. Mei Yun states that any magic or illusion is utterly useless here. At this moment, the candle goddess, Xiao Zhu tells the Golden Lion's avatar that the girl is merely a small specter who recently turned, therefore she certainly cannot handle Mei Yun. Xiao Zhu implores his majesty to assist the girl. Unexpectedly, Xiao Lin stealthily approaches Mei Yun from behind and slits her throat. 
the Golden Lion's avatar appears and declares that Chell Lin's first fight was quite impressive. Now he sees that the girl is indeed a specter. The girl expresses her gratitude but admits she cannot comprehend what just happened. The avatar explains that the bracelet on Mei Yun is a form of magical weapon capable of sensing the presence of a foreign aura. Whenever an enemy attacks her, the bracelet indicates the direction of the attack. Thus, she was able to evade Xiao Lin's strike at the very beginning. However, in order to confirm that Mei Yun was not alone, she had to wear the glasses. The problem lies in the stark difference in her attitude towards these two items. She trusts the bracelet much more than the glasses. This is likely due to her past experience as a victim of illusions, so now for her, seeing does not equal confirming the truth of what is happening. That's when Cho Zhu realizes why the king released his aura. It was done to disrupt Mei Yun's perception. Despite praising Liu Xin, his majesty also warns the girl not to be so reckless in the future. Suddenly, Mei Yun rises and states that she now understands that the girl had an accomplice. Xiao Lin cannot believe her eyes. How could Mai Yun be resurrected? Mai Yun launches an attack against Chiao Lin, but she blocks the strike with her dagger. She understands that the woman's knife is specifically crafted to kill specters, so she must not allow her to get close. A battle ensues between them once again. Xiao Lin severs Mai Yun's hand with her dagger, yet there is no visible impact on the woman. At that moment, the Golden Lion observes Mai Yun's lifeless body and realizes that she is dead. While Xiao Lin is currently fighting her avatar, the Golden Lion wonders if the avatar can survive the death of its main body. He decides to attempt a new technique. If the present combat involves not the real Mai Yun, but rather her spirit, consisting of three entities due to the woman's blood dripping onto the ground before her demise, everything changes. Xiao Lin notices that Mei Yun's attack radius has increased, but her speed has decreased accordingly. Xiao Lin attempts the Thousand Beheadings Lightning Attack, but it has no effect on Mei Yun whatsoever. Observing all of this, the Golden Lion's avatar muses that he too is a spirit. It would be unfortunate if he were harmed. Since he does not wish to endanger the deity, he must find a more careful way to assist Xiao Lin. At that moment, Xiao Lin seizes something resembling vines. The Golden Lion decides to make use of the Yang Fragment when he does so and intercepts Xiao Lin. Freeing her from the gripping vines, a system window appears. It reads, Congratulations, you have used the Yang Fragment and achieved the first level. The Golden Lion admonishes Xiao Lin, warning her to be more prudent. He requests that Xiao Zhu and Xiao Lin hold their breath cover their ears, and monitor their heartbeats. At that moment, he roars like a lion, knocking down Mai Yun's avatar and destroying it. Taking Mai Yun's dagger in his hands, the golden lion remarks on its exceptional quality, noting that it has not developed a single crack throughout the entire battle. Once again, a system window appears. The message reads, Congratulations to the host for the victory over the primary awakener asterisk one. Power plus five. Prestige plus 4, Durability plus 3, Lion's Roar skill used, skill plus 3, Absorbed Essence from the Soil of 3 Entities asterisk 1, Consciousness plus 2, Obtained Crimson Cloud Equipment, Expanded Attribute Sword plus 10. Having perused the message, the Golden Lion marvels at the prospect of expanding attributes. He reflects that his skill has not been in vain. Content with the unfolding circumstances, he caresses his neck, only to realize that it remains hairy. His frustration grows at the malfunctioning system. How much longer must he wait for healing? Yet deep down in the recesses of his consciousness, he contemplates that he appears fairly presentable. A new window emerges, proclaiming, Level 1 odor blocking activated, employing a fragment of yin, one-tenth. In reality, the Golden Lion currently manifests as a fusion of human and beast. He stands on two legs, wielding a dagger in his hand. Lai Fan is attired in brown trousers, adorned with golden ornaments on his shoulders. Observing him, Xiao Zhu exclaims that his majesty looks simply astonishing in his new form. Once again, a system window surfaces. Host has assimilated the essence of three beings, consciousness plus seven, attaining the second level. The Golden Lion notes that he now perceives an aura lingering in the air. As expected from the system, he has grown stronger. 
However, the system window maintains that the adjacent mission, Lion's Pride, remains incomplete. Lai Fan contemplates that the matter of revenge appears to be unresolved. Furthermore, they have yet to discern the nature of the sarcophagus. He informs Xiao Lin that they need to descend the mountain to conclude the investigation. The sun sets. Goddess Xiao Zhu conceals herself beneath the golden lion's cloak, explaining that she cannot appear under the sun's rays. In that moment, Xiao Lin realizes that the sunlight should not touch her either. She also seeks refuge under the golden lion's cloak. This perplexes Li Fan. He informs Xiao Lin that she can possess any body, thus requesting her to embody the deceased Mei Yun. Xiao Lin expresses her reluctance to comply, much to the Golden Lion's bewilderment. He argues that a spirit's life is at stake. Xiao Lin begins to complain about Mai Yun's unsightliness. Nonetheless, the Golden Lion compels her to inhabit the woman's body. As they descend the mountain, the Golden Lion inquires of Xiao Lin if she remembers the teachings he imparted upon her. If you encounter mercenaries, assume the guise of Mai Yun. They venture into the military base as a trio. The soldiers inquire of Xiao Lin, who is currently inhabiting Mai Yun's body, if she has found what she was seeking. The young woman responds affirmatively. Then one of the men asks her where they are headed now. Master Mai Yun, already climbing into the helicopter, replies that they will return to whence they came. Just as she is about to take off, one of the soldiers questions her about the person she has brought along, pointing at Liu Fan, who conceals his face and body beneath his cloak. Mai Yun, without answering the query, requests the man to cease his prattle. At that moment, a new system window appears, stating, Usage of aircraft, courage plus one. Shortly thereafter, they arrive in Chilin. The pilot warns that they will be landing in ten minutes. As they fly over the city, they witness an immense number of wild beasts. One of the soldiers chuckles, gesturing towards the people down below on the ground, remarking that those folks are willing to dig through corpses in search of new resources. Another soldier adds that it is hardly surprising since the bones of ferocious beasts can fetch a price on the black market. One of the men marvels at how those individuals have no fear of being blown up. During their conversation, they remember that Master Mai Yun is seated beside them. Observing her, they notice her furious countenance. One man immediately seeks to justify himself before her, explaining that they have no alternative means of earning a living, and moreover, they are acting in accordance with the guidelines she devised. In that moment, the golden lion gazes out the window. He discerns that unlike the flourishing Lion Mountain, the cities have deteriorated after the restoration of energy. A system window emerges. You feel a sense of pity, wisdom plus one. When they finally land, Xiao Lin, in Mai Yun's body, slits the throats of all the soldiers. She and the Golden Lion approach the Prosperity Corporation. Xiao Zhu declares that despite the building's size, it is merely an enemy stronghold, and Lu Fan can incinerate it in a matter of seconds. Nonetheless, the Golden Lion asserts that they need to survey their surroundings first. As they enter the building, they neutralize all the employees present. Silju informed His Majesty that, according to her prior investigation, the evidence they seek is hidden here, and they spot a room labeled Archive. The Golden Lion employs his divine consciousness and perceives a woman in the room holding a pistol. He states that he will go first. As they open the door, the woman fires at the Golden Lion. Witnessing this, Xiao Lin is already prepared to strike her with her dagger, but the Golden Lion restrains her, assuring that he is unharmed. Mentally, he notes that the building staff seemingly employ aura to create bullets. However, he cannot fathom the nature of this technology. In that moment, the woman is astounded as the bullets simply pass through him. Intrigued, she wonders if he is one of the Awakened Ones. She begins shooting at him, unleashing thousands of bullets, yet they all miss their mark. With a mere touch of his fingers, the Golden Lion causes the pistol to disintegrate into pieces. The Golden Lion seizes the woman and cautions her against moving. Noticing that her hands are held by a colossal paw, she realizes it is a shapeshifter. Now she contemplates the possibility that beast synthesis technology has been employed upon it. She informs the lion that it may slay her if it so desires. The Golden Lion comprehends that the woman does not belong to the Corporation of Prosperity. Thus, he inquires as to why she is present. 
The woman declares that the accursed corporation unlawfully seized her projects, and she has come to uncover evidence. The lion discerns a concealed map within the woman's coat. Upon opening it, he discovers that Lion Mountain is already marked on it. It dawns upon Lyufania that they are indeed trespassing upon his territory. At that moment, a helicopter ascends above the building, and a voice summons Master Lu Yi, announcing the arrival of the command headquarters leader. The Golden Lion and Chao Lin are astonished at how swiftly this has occurred. Near the sarcophagus stands a lady accompanied by two gentlemen, one of whom is her attendant. The young lady inquires as to the purpose of all this enigma and why the gentleman insisted that she come and employ candles instead of conventional illumination during the nighttime. At that moment, a window emerges, revealing that the gentleman is Lu Yi, the director of the branch in Shilin. The lady is Mai Hu, the president's secretary at Kuangsheng Group. Lu Yi asserts that perhaps Mai Hu is unaware, but the sarcophagus can crack when exposed to light. Candlelight is its limit. Observing them are Chiao Lin, Xiao Zhu, and the Golden Lion, comprehending that the sarcophagus is meant to be relocated somewhere. Lu Yi states that if there are no objections, he is prepared for transportation. Mai Hu declares that they will handle it themselves. She implores Wu Gan, the captain of the Kuangxing Group's security service, to drag the sarcophagus. He effortlessly lifts it as if it were a mere feather. The Golden Lion perceives that the man is remarkably strong, not to mention awakened. At that moment, Mai Hu notices someone observing them. She promptly strikes the area with something resembling a whip. The Golden Lion, realizing that she sensed his presence, speculates that she too might be awakened. Lu Yi charges toward the Golden Lion, who evades him. A battle ensues between them. Thanks to the man's exceptional speed, he manages to tear the cloak off the Golden Lion. Lu Yi, Mai Hu, and Wu Gan deduce that their adversary is an awakened werewolf. Lu Yi observes that the beast's form grants him additional defensive abilities, surpassing those of ordinary individuals. Therefore, Lu Yi attempts to execute the lightning speed strike. Despite Lu Yi's confidence in his strength, his leg simply shatters upon striking the golden lion. In that moment, a system window emerges, proclaiming, You have defeated an awakened rank B, speed plus 6, prestige plus 2, resilience plus 6. Mai Hu was astonished that Lu Yi, with a B rank, was unable to overcome the lion. At that instant, Wu Gan hurls the sarcophagus at the golden lion. The golden lion catches it, and in a fit of rage and indignation, exclaims why the hell they are throwing it at him if they themselves claim the sarcophagus is a genuine treasure. Wu Gan awakens and unleashes all his muscles, expanding in size several times over. The man reveals that in order to pass the test, he had to don a specialized vest made of nano-sized carbon fibers. No matter how much he strains his muscles, the vest will not tear. A battle ensues between them, during which it becomes apparent that due to his muscles, it is nearly impossible to inflict any harm upon the man. Nevertheless, the golden lion strikes him in the area devoid of muscles, his head. Wu Gan is knocked out. Observing this, Mai Hu immerses herself in contemplation. She is different from them. She rose from the lowest ranks, a girl who lived on the streets, step by step ascending to the position of the president's secretary thanks to her sharp wit. She acquired and developed a special ability, seduction. Whether human or beast, no man can resist her abilities. They all become her puppets. However, this has no effect on the golden lion. Mai Hu realizes that he is likely composed entirely of yang energy. Therefore, she attempts to unleash her ability to its full extent. The golden lion begins to roar loudly. The fiery blaze engulfs the golden lion. Mai Hu comprehends that it is the purest longing, an uncontrollable force. Even if she desires to restore everything to its former state, she can no longer accomplish it. Xiao Lin asks Xiao Zhu what happened to his majesty. Xiao Zhu explains that he has been consumed by the fire of desire. Each possesses a distinct energy, a flame composed of desire and karma. Both of these flames are exceedingly perilous, thus necessitating their suppression through various spiritual practices. Mai Hu disrupted the mental equilibrium of His Majesty, arousing desire within him. Now they are driven by instincts, and if left unchecked, this longing will incinerate him completely. 
Xiao Zhu also conveys that the sole means of saving him is to satisfy his lust. The demon Xiao Zhu declares that he knows the nature of this aspect of his majesty. He consists of the purest yin, rendering his desire unbearable for anyone. The lazy village inquires about how to aid the golden lion. It is best to persuade everyone that, as the goddess of the candle, any flame, be it natural or spiritual, must submit to her. Xiao Zhu begins to absorb the flames emanating from the golden lion, thereby rescuing him. Mei Hu, who barely survived and did not succumb to the flames, realizes the lion's profound danger. Xiao Lin presses a dagger against her throat and warns her not to move. At this moment, beside the golden lion, a system window appears. You have entered the sage mode. Mental power plus 100, resolve plus 10, valor minus 100. Following that, a new message emerges. Congratulations on completing the lion ceremony. You have acquired a new skill, fiery, sacred fire intellect. Xiao Lin requests permission from the golden lion to kill Mai Hu. Mai Hu falls to her knees before the golden lion, pleading for mercy, promising to do anything he asks of her in return. The lion then inquires why the girl needed the sarcophagus and wonders about its usefulness. Mai Hu responds that she does not know all the details. The only thing she knows is that the sarcophagus is a magical weapon for reincarnation. She has heard that ancient secrets are inscribed inside it. By lying within, one can comprehend all these secrets and be reincarnated. The golden lion asks about the price of such an endeavor. Mai Hu replies that by uncovering all the secrets, a person will inevitably go mad and their body will turn to dust. The golden lion understands that the ground surrounding the sarcophagus consists of the remains of those who failed. Despite the knowledge potentially being quite useful, the risk is too high. Shavalin implores the golden lion to allow her to lie in the sarcophagus. However, Lu Fan refuses as it is too risky. At that moment, a system hint appears. Jost mission completed. Reward received. Increased chance of success in the sarcophagus trial. Success rate boosted by 30%. Nevertheless, Xiao Lin persuades the golden lion to grant her permission to lie in the sarcophagus. Once the girl assumes the form of a ghost and lies down, the golden lion unleashes the power of heart's flame and soul's flame. He asks Xiao Lin to give him a signal if anything goes wrong so he can pull her out. Xiao Lin opens her eyes and realizes that she is in her village. She hears her parents calling her to eat. The girl understands that she is being deceived, that it is merely an illusion, but she wants to catch a glimpse of it with at least one eye. Nonetheless, Xiao Lin still sits down to eat with her parents. A new scene unfolds before the girl's eyes. A large crowd gathers around Xiao Lin's house. Everyone congratulates her parents on their daughter's marriage. Xiao Lin herself sits in a crimson wedding attire next to her spouse. At this moment, Xiao Zhu informs the golden lion that the sun is rising, and if Xiao Lin does not wake up, she will be enchanted. The golden lion understands that Xiao Lin is currently struggling. Though the flame still burns, it is incredibly difficult for her to resist the charms of the sarcophagus. He realizes that there is no more time to wait. Xiao Lin awakens. She expresses her gratitude to the golden lion for allowing her to spend some time with the one she loves. A system window appears. Congratulations, host, on completing a special mission. Prestige plus 20. Demon consciousness upgraded to the third level. Awakened skill. Panoramic vision. Awakened skill. Communication. You have entered the illusion of three lifetimes, and the reward received is secret phrases. Extension of energy absorption effect. Accompaniment with the cliff. Mai Hu, who has been standing next to them all this time, attempts to leave. Xiao Zhu catches her and asks the golden lion what he plans to do with her. The golden lion contemplates. On one hand, the girl tried to incite desire in him and forced him to utilize a special technique. But on the other hand, it helped him elevate his skill level. He then tells Mai Hu that he wants her to assist him in becoming better until he achieves greatness. They exit the building, burning it to the ground. Now that the Golden Lion has established a connection with Lion Mountain, he can destroy them all. At that moment, a system window appears. Attention! The second energy restoration is about to begin. Early in the morning, a warning emerges on Lion Mountain. Attention! 
The second energy restoration is commencing right now. The true golden lion, who has been resting all this time, understands that this moment has finally arrived. Several system windows appear. Mission. Open the borders and expand your influence. Explanation. Connect your spirit with the evil force and Lion Mountain to make the area around the mountain the source of your power. Please endeavor to expand the territory of Lion Mountain to withstand a significant influx of aura until the completion of the second stage of energy restoration. Attention. Should you fail to expand the territory and achieve the declared objective within the allotted time, your corporeal form shall prove incapable of withstanding the flux of aura resulting in your demise. Progress. Zero one hundred thousand. The resplendent lion, heretofore unacquainted with the vast expanse of Lion Mountain, elects to employ a peculiar skill, thus attempting it. He employs the knowledge of the demon. Henceforth, he perceives the flow of energy throughout Lion Mountain as if he were its very progenitor. The lion discerns that the golden tree has fallen. This perplexes Lu Fania, for it should have been safeguarded by the lizards. At that moment, he espies an unconscious lizard lying prone. This deeply vexes the golden lion, who dare conduct themselves in such a manner upon his territory, and furthermore, elude his grasp. He resolves to trace the trail of energy left behind by this enigma. The golden lion seethes with rage. Someone has dared to create turmoil within his territory, and moreover, topple his golden tree, the very root of Lion Mountain's spiritual power. It blossoms every ten years, bears fruit every ten years, and ripens its fruits over a span of ten years. By consuming the fruit of the golden tree, one can attain the power of a demon for thirty years. The golden lion beckons all the animals forthwith. The speaking parrot, the captain of the aerial forces of Lion Mountain, the green serpent, the master of the Duan Yu Hall, the monster of Lion Mountain, Accompanying them are the White Fox, the master of the Sai Shan Hall, the monster of Lion Mountain, the Giant Bear, the master of the Bai Hall, the monster of Lion Mountain, and the second brother Pangolin, the guardian of the Golden Peak, the monster of Lion Mountain. They chance upon the black and red centipedes, which possess rather sizable proportions. The centipedes begin hissing at them. Incensed by such insolence, the enraged golden lion resolves to exhibit to these monsters the true might of his lion's roar. The serpent advises him that his majesty should not soil his hands. She herself takes the initiative to attack the centipedes. At that moment, the lizard, who was tasked with guarding the golden tree, regains consciousness. The golden lion inquires of him the origin of the centipedes. The lizard responds that they were once rainworms, tilling the soil beneath the tree. However, during the restoration of spiritual energy, they unexpectedly began to mutate. However, only in body, not in mind, the worms succumbed to madness and spiraled completely out of control. At this moment, the serpent realizes that the more centipedes she slays, the more they multiply. She rejects the assistance offered by the other beasts and transforms into a colossal dragon, obliterating the centipedes. In this moment, the parrot becomes distraught, for the serpent had proclaimed that she resided within the cave solely due to her unflappable nature. However, now the parrot comprehends that she had merely been siphoning the strength of the golden lion. The serpent Xiao Qin, with a tone of indignation, declares that the golden lion has indeed turned her into his own opposite. The battle rages on. The golden lion realizes that further down the mountain lie the power lines of Lion Mountain. If one were to believe the system, the source of his power is directly linked to these lines. If the centipedes damage them, the consequences will be dire. Xiao Qin, the serpent, reports that the centipedes have fled. She explains that they navigate through the use of their skin covering, but her own sense of smell is entirely overridden by the aura of the spiritual power lines. The Golden Lion comprehends that the first restoration occurred on the surface, while the second took place in the depths of the earth. He senses how these lines seem to extend, as if in continuation of his own spinal column. His Majesty leads all the other animals in his wake. Along the way, they encounter Red Umbrella, Sai Lu, 